want to thank God for this moment. When I received the message that I would be ministering in women convention, what I asked was, are you sure it's me you wanted? <laughs> because I never expected it. You may not know how excited I am to be here in the Women Convention 2024. The topic given to me to speak on says the impact of the present time on our children, both the youth, the teenagers, the impact of the present time on our children. By my ministration this afternoon, someone here, God will correct error in your life. That thing that has gone wrong in the life of your child, by the entrance of the word of God, there shall be correction. That child you think that is growing out of your control, today, by the power of Holy Ghost, the spirit of that child shall be arrested by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. No child of anyone hearing me shall be wayward. No child of anyone hearing me shall be lost from the kingdom of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to see a place, Philippians 2. Philippians 2, we take just verses 12 to 16. Philippians 2, 12 to 16. I will read it first. Are we there? And he says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all, do all things without murmurings and disp disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and the perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Praise the Lord. This passage of the scripture was Paul's letter to Philippians. As a parent, it was his letter to the Philippians because this was a church he established. And uh, he was like a father to the church. And here he was admonishing them as it is unto us today. Like unto the children. So Apostle Paul maintained that ground as a parent. Unto the church. Teaching and admonishing them. And he made mention of crooked nation which is the time like this. So he kept on ministering to them. He kept on coming to them, even while he was in prison. That prison means he was in bad condition. So even in his bad condition, he did not leave his children to perish. Parents of these days, they allow their children to, you know, to align with what is going on in society today. They call it trends. They call it trends. Apostle Paul was in ugly condition, but he never let his children to be perished. And I want to ask us as parents... How often do we bring our children to God? Like, I'm not saying bringing them to church or 
praying with them. No. He's not just there. Apostle Paul said, from where we read, he told them that he wanted them, he wanted to see them as obedient children, not just before me as your parent, but outside there. Let the world see you and know that you are an obedient child of God. So the impact he made on the church wasn't for the church to fear him. Wasn't for the children of God in the church to see him and obey him like eye service. But he wanted them to work out their own salvation. Because he has planted seed in them while he was with them. Now in the prison, he was watering the seed with the word of God admonishing them, like following them up in order to make sure that what he planted in them was still germinating. And I still ask us questions. What do we as parents in this crooked generation plant in our children? And in this plantation I am talking about I said before, it's not just about praying with your children, taking them to church, making sure they know God, they uh, attend church services. I must tell you that the strongest impact you will have on your children is the impact of influence, influential impact. And this influential impact is not in words, it's not it's not just in West. It's not just in, in coming to church. It's in your daily activities. What do you let them see of you? I want to bring in a scripture on that. I need someone. Here is my wife. I think you will, you will run it husband and wife from here. Open for me... Um, the book of John 5. Book of John chapter 5. We take it from 19. I want to bring out something from there. This is the, the relationship between the father and son. John 5 from 19. John 5, 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them. Jesus said to them. Verily, verily, I say unto I you. I say unto you. The son can do nothing of himself. The son can do nothing of himself. But what he seeth the father. What do. he seeth the father. It means that Jesus was influenced by the character of the father, by the appearance of the father, by the works of the father, by the doings of the father, not by the teachings of the father. Because he was God himself. But Bible said, Jesus said here, that what I saw the father do. Sometimes we do. Not knowing that our children, they see. And they, inversely you are influencing them. See, I was into music. You know, secular music. You know me now. But up to now, up till now. A time came, I just packed all my, all the uh, CD cassettes, I packed them off. Because I did not, when, when I started giving birth to children, I did not want them to go this way. But it's a surprising thing that even now, some of us here, some of parents, some of mothers here, they play secular songs in their homes, dancing it and their children are learning it. I have to tell you things, so, because you don't know the encounter I had in that secular music before I ran out. Not everything you will start talking. I have to tell you this. There's a, uh, uh, some of you may know the guy, one American musician like that. They call him a Uzi or so. 
that had tattoos all over the body, cross everywhere, piercings everywhere. And there was one hot recently, one big show, one big concert he had in America. Because there is one song he released ending of last year's show this year that ran so well worldwide. That he sang, I, I Just Wanna Rock. Everybody was dancing the song in America. Everybody. Now he had a concert. If you see the multitude, youths, young people, 15, 16, 14, 13, 12, 20, 21, youths, fill the stadium. And uh, in the midst of the concert, he made, he made a statement. He stopped music and said, I hope you all are still here. They say yes. He said, if you are still here, I am sorry for you because rapture has already taken place. That if you are still here in this arena with me, I'm sorry. There is no going back. You are going to hell with me. And people, we are like, what is he saying? He said, I'm not lying to you. He said, I'm sorry. It is too late. You can't go back. If you are playing my song, you are going to hell with me. Because these people, they have given themselves to the devil. They sell soul, not, not giving their mother or their father this, this time. They give their soul, and their soul will be manipulated, used by the devil. They even give the music that we sell around the world. They will feed them and put them there. And you allow your children to be following. So if this one could say something like that, imagine others that have not said anything. The songs that you let to enter the subconsciousness of your children. That's why if I see any child that dances to secular music, I will, say, I will, I will not even allow that child to come near my children again. This morning I had them rehearsing all these worship songs they sing in the church. That's what I need to hear. So some of us that are party bangers, I am sorry for you. I said before I was there, I ran out. I was depressed. I came out. And it, it was in that depression that mommy called me back in the month of July or August, 2011. And that time I released my last song that was just pushing in. Their agents started meeting me. I ran for my life. I'm telling you, even when my colleagues were drawing tattoos all over their body, fear could not let me. I was asking myself, if I draw this thing, Will I see my parents again? Because my father, <laughs> will be tired you, 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 say, you draw that in and come to his house. So, because of the upbringing that he gave us, fear, even in my adult age, could not let me deviate. You can inquire about me. I was a very good farmer. I was a very good farmer in a way that I, I could farm for my, my mom. Also, it became my source of income because I was going places, farming for people, receiving money, taking care of myself. You can ask her about me in the village you now. I was a very hard working man. Forget about this Lagos that looks like if up to now I still wish I could have a land. Open land where we stay. I will teach people. Sometimes I see CFE outside wasting. I'll be crying. If I see a way, I will pack it to. <laughs> I'm telling you, these are the things that I see. These are things I know very well. So why am I saying this? Life, this generation now is no more about you. It's no more about you as a parent. It's about these children. Now, if enemy can capture your children, you are gone. I saw in Revelation chapter 12, 
there a glorious woman? Bible said that she was decorated with stars, full of glory, and she was pregnant, about to deliver, and the demon was there waiting for her to deliver. Demon was not after her glory, but after the seed of her settlement in the old age. I saw on Facebook yesterday, it was trending everywhere, a young boy about 20, 21 or so. I don't know what happened between him and, the, and his mother. He stabbed the mother to death. The video is all over on Facebook. He did this yesterday. The woman died in the pool of blood. So you see, maybe this is a woman that overpampered a child. And the child grew like that. Now in the old age, you are now cursing the child because the child does not do anything. You start to fight him. It's not the child's fault. It is your fault because you refuse to lead the child to the right work on time. I've said it before. Glory of every man is in his work. Now, in this age, if you fail to put your children through work, you will regret it in the time of your settlement. Because work has to do with the glory of every man. The glory that you are seeking for is a reward of the work you are doing now. But we have left that work over our children and they placed it on money, placed it on self-pleasure. Even your dressing, your children are seeing it. Everything you do, whether they, you think they see it or not, they are, it is influencing them. Known or un unknown to you. So in this crooked generation, God expects us to be the light. We are the light in this crooked generation. So we ought to mind what we do. We ought to mind how we, how we do things, what we say. Because it is indirectly or directly influencing them. Ask my wife, sometimes if I wake up in the morning to do my normal morning routine, press up and uh, exercise, all of them will join me. Sometimes they will not even, they will occupy the place where you want to do the exercise and be doing it for you. Because they see, now they know that, they know the time I always do exercise. When you wake all of them, we jump down. <laughs> that is it because that's what they see me do. I did not tell them. I did not even ask them, come and do. No. My first child now, most times if I am, if I am sweeping the house and try, they will be trying to disrupt your sweeping. Sometimes I don't really chase them out. I let him, okay, oh yeah, pick this one. Even the nylon I am, sometimes if I don't see any dirt to pick, I will tell them to be picking sand, just to keep him busy. Oh yeah, pick this piece of sand, go and trash it. And today, he will be five years by next month. But today, he is one sweeping my room. If I come back and that room is not swept, I will call him. Why is this room like this? Even last time, trying to pack, because if he wants to sweep, he will pack everything. Even if you are standing here, he may pack you and put you on the bed. He will pack everything and put up in order to. That is life for you. And any day you, tell, you, you, you stop him from sweeping it, it will be war, crying. And I told my wife, I said, please, don't train these children as boys. Let him be pounding paper for you in the kitchen. Take them through. Some, things, some local things I, I, I am making now, some local food, because that's where I specialize, because it's what I like. I learned them from my mother. Because I, I was her handbag. 
The only thing was that I did not know that I would need to be cooking soup when I grew up. I did not put much interest in there, but I was there. That's why when I entered uh, school, in, in my secondary school, when I was living in the hostel, everybody had pots uh, cooking. I was cooking as well. But the fact was that after cooking, it's only me that will eat my food. I did not complain. I did not complain. I cook and eat. It doesn't matter how it tastes to you, but it's my food. I cooked it. Even when it's not sweet to me, I cooked it. Yes. Because then, anytime I'm, my mom wanted to cook, he, she would tell me to go and uh, boil uh, palm fruit for her. The reason why she stopped sending me to, boil, uh, to uh, cook or boil palm fruit for her was because after boiling, I will eat half. Sometimes she will come to cook and she will say, Hey, why a woman? There was a day she, she put the palm fruit on the fire. And the, if I, as soon as I perceived the smell, ah, I don't finish I'm inside before it. And that day, I came and I was looking for, I just used that uh, big spoon that has holes. I put it inside and drew a, a large quantity. And I heard her coming. I could not know what to do. I opened my pocket, put it in my pocket. I poured it in my pocket like this and I was walking like this. If you see where I eat Palm fruit, you will think that it's Osa on Jida ate something there. That was my upbringing. Sometimes they tell me to, okay, uh, go and boil white rice. It's only God that will deliver them that day. Because right from par boiling, all those local rice, right from par boiling, I don't finish some half. was my, my upbringing. So my mom led me to see some certain things that helped me in life. Sometimes I tell myself that the type of inspiration I used that time, I don't think that there is any child that still has such a chaotic inspiration. Inspiration of how to steal somebody's fruit. I remember one day, and uh, the man was every, all, all the time monitoring me, and I had to I had to make a new strategy to be plucking from his uh, peers, peer uh, tree. And that day, I monitored him. He he left. Anytime. He left the house. I would climb the tree and pluck as many as I wanted. And, uh, and the time came, he noticed that his peers uh, were reducing every day. And he never knew how it happened. It was happening. And he also learned a new strategy to catch the thief. And on that day, it was an AK market day. And... Uh, he, he owned his motorcycle and made sure he made noise for us to know that he was going out. And he zoomed out. When he zoomed out, I prepared normal way to do my stuff. I was on the tree. He came back. When he came back, he parked by the, uh, by the tree. And he said to me, continue. Look at me, looking at him. They continue. And I continued plugging the peers. And after, he picked all the peers. Because normally, if he had invited me to come and plug these peers, he would have paid. For letting me to fall into the trap of a thief. 
I was not paid. I was even trying to, you know, set myself free from the punishment. And he carried the pill to market. He did not even say thank you. That was the inspiration we had. And that because our parents of that time, they never had time of, you know, directing the inspiration of children. I would have become something great from it. Because I was highly inspired then. But there was no direction. It was self-direction. And things we saw that helped us. Look at our children today. Same thing is what they are in need of. And because they need it, it's not for you to be telling them this type of story. But it's for you to be, you know, Giving them the influential life that we make them to become. Some manners, some moral lessons that our children need is not all about sitting them down to talk to them. They learn fast by what they see you do. And uh, what a child sees in the life of a, of, of a parent does not easily go out of their subconsciousness. It is, it is, it is, how do I put it? It is strongly pressed into them. And they cannot leave it. They cannot step out of it. Unless they later in the days get stronger influence that will lead them out of their, the way they grew up. Look at our children today. How do we monitor the friends they keep? We monitor the friends they keep. In my, where I am living, any day my children will come out to play, adults must be with them. And that playing has time. Because you don't give children freedom. Don't Leave freedom with them. Because anytime you give a child freedom, I've said there was a time I taught the youth in their camp meeting. I told them that God does not give, give freedom. What the Spirit of God gives is liberty. They are two different things. Freedom is, 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 is amateur to liberty. Freedom, you do what you want. You are free to do what you want. But when it comes to the liberty that the Spirit of God gives, that liberty is freedom to do what God wants. It's freedom to do what God and how God wants it. And Jesus said to John, said to Peter in John chapter 21, he said to him, when after, after asking Peter, do you love me for three times? He said to Peter, when you are a youth, you will do whatever you want. But when you get old, that's, that means when you mature, you will give your hands to someone you don't even know and they will take you to where you don't want to go. That is maturity. Jesus was teaching him the maturity that he was about to become. Because there will be a time in life as a child of God, you don't do what you want. You don't please yourself. You don't do what your body wants. But what the Spirit of God in you wants. That's why sometimes you see our daddy or our mommy taking, stepping out of their comfort, their comfort zone. Just to achieve something for God. That is the power of liberty. It's not the power of freedom. It is freedom that makes our politicians to be ruling us like this. Because they think they have the freedom. You can't do anything. But in liberty, you don't do things like you, don't, you can't do anything. You will do things with the fear of the Lord. 
knowing that there is someone that is monitoring you, knowing that there is someone that put you there. Praise the Lord. So that John 5, you read it at home. You study it more because I don't have much time. Jesus said that things he saw the Father because he never did anything of his own. Never did anything of his own. No wonder in Genesis chapter 1, the word was the last to be made manifest in the creation of the world. The Father came, created, done everything. There was no result, no good result. He did not see any good thing. And the Holy Ghost came, hovered on the surface of the earth. And after the hovering, the incubation, there was the utterance of the word. And God said, that was when the, that, that was the unleashment of the Son, which is the word of God. So he appeared last because he looked like he was neglected. He looked like he was not anything. But he was inside learning from the father. That was why when father said, who will I send? It was only the one that was ready that could say, send me. You don't understand that one. It was only the one ready to do the work by learning, by influence that said, send me. Remember that Lucifer had been an angel there, fronting as the next to God. That was his pride. He was there, known as the head angels, showing forth as the assistant God. But the son was inside, serving the father. When you don't allow your children to serve you, you deny them the readiness to walk for your glory at the old age. That's why most of us sometimes we want to cook instead of you to carry that your son or that your daughter to help you in the kitchen. You call the housemaid. You are imparting your personal influence on the outsider. And you tell your children, go and watch TV, stay inside. As Elisha was telling us a story yesterday, a Muslim man, he locked up his daughter inside the room because he did not want the daughter to mingle with the world, with the friends. And the daughter was inside the room. They did not allow her to go out, to do things, to join friends. And uh, one day, the daughter had a boyfriend because inside the house where they put him, I, I assume that there was TV, DSTV, phone, connections, and everything. But they never allowed her to go out so that she would not corrupt. So, one day, the boy, no, one day, several times, the boyfriend dressed like a woman, all this Muslim, they cover up, put something, was coming to the house, and the parents welcomed her, him, her. And uh, she was coming. Before they knew with the girl, their daughter became pregnant. And they were surprised. How come? How did this happen? That was when they realized that they were making mistake. See, caging children does not mean training them. Jesus prayed the prayer, I think in the book of John. I can't remember the chapter. He said to the father, please, these ones are your seed. They are your sons, but they are on earth. I am not praying that you take them out of the earth, but in this earth, please, father, be with them. Help them. So the help of God is not, if God did not want us to, if, if God was thinking like that, he would not allow us to mingle on earth. Would be sleeping in the church. Hunger would have killed us inside here. So what that child needs, one, teach them, talk to them. 
not everything you beat a child. There are times in life you sit a child down and talk to the child. And there are times you give them responsibilities. My son is too rough. But when it comes to those responsibilities given to him at home, he doesn't joke with it. If even me that I gave him the responsibility, if I stand on his way, he may carry me and throw outside just to carry out that assignment. As he's growing up, you'll be giving him stronger responsibilities. A time will come, he will now become, it will, it will now become his responsibility to give his younger ones responsibilities. Because lack of responsibility makes someone foolish. God wants us to walk. He said anything you lay your hand on, he will prosper. He is waiting for you to walk so that he will prosper you as a reward. So if you fail to bring your children with the, with the intuition of walking, you are leading them to do. Because I wonder why that young man, that young boy killed the mother yesterday still don't know why. It may be that he asked the mother for food. Mother said, oh, oh so you are here, man. this is only what you do. Come and ask food. Don't do anything. It may be out of that, something will happen. But if you had trained them, when I was in the village, I, had, I started thinking of how to reshape my father's house. And immediately I made money. That was the first thing I carried out because it has been recorded in my brain. My father does not joke with me when it comes to that. I changed the parlor, changed the curtain, changed the TV, put fridge, everything, buy generator, keep for him. Because it, I, I, we did not have it when we were growing up. So even some of my friends that had it, I was, I was not envying them, but I was asking myself, when will I come to this level? Because I was walking towards it. I helped my parents. In when we were kids, they were taking us to farm. We were running away from it. I thought they were maltreating us. Like, every day you go to farm. Every day you will, you will be in farm from morning till evening. You will eat in the farm. Everything. And any time they say you are, we are going to farm, my mind will jump. But later, when I matured in it, it became my work. I would farm for my parents and go out and farm for money. I was the one clothing myself. Even when my father said, I don't have money to train you in school, I said, I must go to school. I must go to university. I was dragging it with my father until uh, mommy and uh, our late sister came home from school, and they came and said, what is happening? I said, look at one I am battling with my father. And mommy said over her dead body that I will not go to serve, I will not go to do boy boy. And my father had arranged with a man that was planning to come and take me to Lagos to serve. And all of a sudden, the man said that he is not interested again. And uh, Mommy applied for me in, in Enugu, and uh, they gave me admission. I also went to mommy, and I asked mommy about uh, Mirimalu Ugo. He was my childhood friend. I begged mommy, say, I can't leave my friend, please. And uh, mommy said, okay. They applied for him. They gave him admission as well. We went to Enugu and wrote an exam, and uh, we entered school. Why I'm saying this is, the impact, the impact of friendship, who you keep as friend, who you let your children keep as friend. Now, the daughter of that allergy got pregnant. They did not know how it happened. And when he came to my tongue with him, Miri Maruga, I asked mommy, please, this is my childhood friend. I can't leave him. This is what we have been talking about, the dream we had. And we went to Enugu. And today we are good friends. Praise the Lord. So in parenting, 
make sure you have a good influence, good example, good image, because that is what your children are looking onto. You are the first God they know. You are the first uh, uh, plasma TV they watch. Forget about that one in your parlor. After all, only this year, they have broken my TV two times. Only this year. Presently, there is no TV in my house. I said, from now, you'll be watching your book. Watch your book. Just this year. So you are the image they see. You are the image they become. My time has run off, Abby. Praise the Lord. And uh, I want to add, you can study Isaiah 54. I had time I would have taken us through there as well. Isaiah 54, you can study from 11 to 17. Here God was making promise about our children. So if you go home, you study it, and I pray for you. Any power of this generation that is seeking to swift your children from you and from God, may God disappoint that power. May God destroy them. Do you know that the strong, one of the strongest laws in the world now is law that favors children against the parents? That is to show you the kind of generation we are into. You can't shout on your child, he will call police for you. You can't flog a child that even Bible says we should flog them. But if you do that, aka a boogie. You see that? That is the crooked generation we are into. That's why some of us are afraid to take our children abroad. Ask my wife now, if I start to beat them, I don't, I beat them in a way that when they remember the beating, they will cry before I come. Praise the Lord. And I pray, may God bless our children. With good spirit, may God impart our children. With the spirit of excellence, with the spirit of intelligence, with the spirit of wisdom, and the grace to do the right work for their glory. May God impart them with that spirit in the name of Jesus. You shall not cry over your child at your old age. You shall not regret giving birth to that child. Whatever thing that has gone wrong in that child, I speak correction now. I speak restoration of their good spirit in the name of Jesus. Any bad spirit hovering around your children or living in them, right from this altar, I speak as a son of prophet. Let that spirit jump out and die now. Let their works over your children come to an end. In the name of Jesus, let your seven powerful amen confirm it.